Welcome to Jimmy and Neil Have Problems, where we have one problem, two problem, red problem, and blue problem. Thank you to Dr. Seuss for our intro. Today, the problem we're talking about is incubators and co-working spaces have bad incentive structures. And kind of the source for this is we have dealt with a, a lot of incubators and co-working spaces, specifically in Grand Rapids. Now, we just didn't feel like they, they helped that many, really tangibly helped that many businesses. And so we were trying to figure out why and the the kind of what we came up with is that there's an incentive structure there that's not super well aligned in terms of, yeah, I guess co-working spaces have no investment in the companies that are in their space long-term. I, what, what is the challenge with incubators? So, uh, well, incubators and co-working spaces are just sort of, they're very similar, you know, just slight differences. I'd say, you know, incubators are, pretty much ex exclusively startups, whereas yep. co-working spaces, you know, you can be like a, a work at home professional. Um, yeah. And, you know, work at a co-working space. So I think we'll, we'll pretty much use those interchangeably. Um, and I think that um, really the, the bad incentive structures, if you think about, you know, if you're working on a startup at, uh, an incubator if if the incubator staff believe that your startup is going to fail you know and, and you know if they have you know good good yep. reason for that you know if they're subject matter experts um but you you are paying them for being there so their incentive is to not give good feedback to you yes for a co-working space yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, cause they want to keep you there as long as possible. Yep. And, and that, that is where the, the bad incentive comes from. It's not from, you know, giving good feedback or, or getting startups to succeed. It's by getting them to, um, yeah, be, be a member of this incubator for as long as possible. Yeah. So they're really about time, not quality. Not yeah, not quality or success, you know, they, they would rather you, you know, sit there for three years making, you know, glacial progress yep. and then eventually spurning out um, yep. it, as opposed to, you know, doing all that work in one month and getting to the same spot. And, and we just think that's, that's not good like that's bad we we should be working in spaces that you know push us to where we all get better because yeah. I, I think that's that's the real shame is that there's there's situations where you know the incubator and the participants are all all in a, a much healthier position you know with other models yeah, well, and I think that I, this, it's kind of coming back to me. The challenge with incubators is they're exclusive and they might, like, they have to make somewhat sure bets. Whereas well, a co-working space, no, uh, the, yeah. Incubator is different than accelerator. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. you're right. Yep, yep. Incubator would be more Hope Entrepreneurship Institute than Techstars. Uh, yeah, yes. Um, what do you think of when you think of an incubator? Because maybe, yeah. In, right interchangeable with co-working space i think it's just you know who oh. you're targeting it's it's a branding thing then let's just call it incubators let's just say incubators have bad incentive structures Perfect. that works because i think the co-working space is like muddy waters um yeah okay yep. yes yeah so an incubator is basically a co-working space that's selling to startups yep and yep. there's bad in so like uh start garden in grand rapids has an incubator arm it's like ten dollars a month for a desk, right? Yep. And the challenge there is you're in this community, and we've experienced this where people are like, "Oh, that's such a cool idea!" Blah blah blah. Nobody gives it to you straight because they aren't incentivized to at all. Yeah. So let's. So, yes. Okay. So then, kind of, this leads us to some of our solutions where we want to start to align the the structure, the success of the companies with the incubators. So mm -hmm. one way of doing this is. Right, like okay, you can work here for free, but we get five percent of your company. Yeah, and, which and, yeah, 
I think that is, you know, one of the weaker solutions um, because it's a very noisy process. You know, you are extrapolating so far into the future. Yep. You know, what what is, you know, reasonable equity? And if you just say, yep. okay, you know, everyone it's 5% and, and you know, yeah. with equity, you've got, you've got normal noise, you know, that some are successful and some are not. Um, but I don't, yeah. That, well, and that, there's, there's all kinds of nuances. Is it, is it joint stock like, or is it dual class shareholder? Like, yeah. Or do they even have a company to give you equity? Like this requires setting mm -hmm. an LLC, all that stuff. Or, well, I don't even know if an LLC I don't know. I've never gotten a company to the point where you can sell stocks of it. So I don't know actually how that works. Well, you can sell stocks whenever. You just need some legal document saying that, you know, yeah. you have this many shares. And, shares, yeah. You know, you can you can sell that privately. You know, like, hey, hey, Jimmy, do you want to buy, you know, shares for, for Neil's the best? You know, I'll make uh. the LC soon and, you know, it's as valuable as you want it to be, right? If I own a hundred percent, I get to set the value and then you get to choose if you buy it or not. I, I will say like cryptos and DAOs could make that easier. What is could a make DAO? That, uh, decentralized autonomous organization. Ooh. So yep, yep. basically you'd have, and these are smart contracts. So basically all it would be, it would be mirroring the same stock process, except you'd have like a token of some sort and you have a set yep. amount of tokens and yep. yeah, that could make that really easy. Like one button push and boom, you have everything. Yeah. Well, that, that could allow you to sell on an open market without, you know, some, some third party platform. Exactly. Which is really nice. Um, another model is like, okay, it's free to work, but we get you're you know we're the first person to see well just in your next funding round or we get x percent of your next funding yeah, yeah. round so so basically the idea of this is you're both operating on the, the assumption it's like you're using a credit card um and and you both know that the person like the the sugar daddy quote unquote who who provides the funding is picking up the tab yeah um you know I, I like this a good amount. Um, you know, yeah. when, when you're fun, when you raise a funding round, you're cash rich. So you're, you know, hitting the expense when you're cash rich, you can, you know, contractually do that, but it, it doesn't lead any, you know, long-term speculation of what the cost of stock is. Um, yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, I like it. It, it just means you're extrapolating, but, less far into the future yeah it's a smaller um, time scale it, it would probably lend itself to more advanced companies with clear path to funding yeah 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 um but it, it also uh, you know really nicely aligns you know the the incubator and the the founders um you know as they both want want funding um yeah. You know, and it could probably be a funding or profit, you know, contract. So if, yep. if you choose to never need funding, then you, yeah, you're eventually going to hopefully hit profit. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that, that would mean like, okay, the, the incubator staff, it's like, we want to get paid. Okay. How can we use our network to, to get, you know, these these startups funded you know yeah. i think for me the big question around this one is um you know how do the um angel investors or, or the vcs interpret this um yeah. and i'm not an angel investor um or or a, a vc um but if any of you listeners want to give me lots of a million dollars so I can be an angel investor, um, I would love that. That would be great. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's my call to action from this. Let's get Neil to be an angel. An angel. Yeah, that sounds great. Of I think that's type. a great goal. You know, if, any, well... if you want me to be an angel investor, that that's the best I get. Well, you know, like, I guess like a, 
a legit religious angel, you know, number one on the Neil list and then angel investor number two. But then like, if you just want to send me angel wings, that, that also works. I guess that's, nice. that's number three. The only thing I worry about this, and, and, and you know, it's interesting I'm saying this in light of the corruption you're speaking right now, is what, what <laughs> type of corruption could come out of this? You know, like I'm just reading about um, Crazy Eddie's. Have you ever heard about that? Mm-mm, no. Insane. It was this guy who um, started a VCR store and then skimmed profits off the top and paid everyone in cash so he didn't have to pay taxes, all this. Oh, and, then, and then someone was like, you're making a lot of money now what if you do an IPO? And so basically to prep Mm -hmm. his company for an IPO, he just had to stop skimming profits off the top. And it looked like his revenues jumped like 25, 30%. Good. And then, and then he got the IPO and then his family, they just sold off all the stock, like $800 million worth. And then eventually all unraveled, but yeah. um, Yeah. I just wonder like, would VCs even trust this? It's like, okay, yeah, it's it's your person. Of course, you're going to try to sell me on this person. They're in your incubator, you know? Like, yeah. although I think this would lead to a pretty stringent, you know, process of like, yeah, we want to make some money. We're not taking just the average show off the street. And, yep, yep. Which, well, eh, yeah. Yes. I guess it depends on, you know, how they interpret free to work, right? Is that like, uh, we have limited space. So we're going to be, excluded. yeah, that's or true. Is that we want, you know, how do we maximize our chance of, you know, getting paid? And it's by having as many people in as possible. Yeah. That's an interesting point. Um, so that, that's a, you know, a, a good question. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but, and, and I yeah. don't know, you know, how, how it would, you know, it, it's not uncommon for, you know, to, to, to buy things, right. And, and, you know, to have it, you know, be on a, on a credit card, you know, and and that is a debt, right. And, and, you know, that, that's fine. We, we live with this view of, um, yeah, of, of money where it's okay to be in debt and that seems to be working. Okay. Um, um we that's yeah that's a that's another conversation but you know is it just viewed as another debt or is it view yeah how is it viewed Uh, well i mean honestly if you think about it with with hope college like they got like we were careful about and tried to keep our startup away from hope college because they take a cut yeah and they take the pot like they take the the patents and i mean that's basically what this is in some ways you know it's like hey you're gonna work here we're taking a cut but it's only for one round right it's only yeah 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 um and this is much better than hope hope colleges is pretty restrictive yeah well but they've also got mechanisms to get around it yes they do yep um yeah i guess that's that's about all i have for that that solution we can and for pay it forward, I think Hope College comes up again. Hope well, College is attempting. So, uh, let, let's outline um, for those listening. Um, the the next solution is a pay it forward model. Um, yes. Where where you're just sort of hoping for goodwill, that you know you do a, a nice thing now, and then the the funding will come through. You know, donations or, or good investment deals. You know, just generally being honest. The, the 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 premise of this one is being good and honest will pay in the long run. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think even in this pay it forward model, like if it were like a dollar a month or something like that, just so people, yeah, as a mechanism for habit building, you yep, know, yep, sort of, but like a, a a token gesture, like a Planet Fitness type of type of thing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And yeah, so Hope College is attempting this with Hope Forward, which is attempting to make tuition free. I don't know if it's one of these systems where they take, where they say, okay, if you come to Hope College, you have to pay us X percent of your salary in the next 10 years. Or if it's more like, we're just going to rely on alumni donations. I don't know yeah. the specifics of I that. I believe but... the the Hope Forward program is hoping for, you know, just donations. And I know there are some schools that 
do this. There's a, a naval engineering school yeah. uh, out on the East Coast that has that model where it's free tuition. And, you know, their, their alumni are, you know, generous enough where they can do that. Yep. Um, and this is kind of nice because if you own the space, it doesn't really matter. Like, yeah. If you're getting yeah donations for the space, anyone could come. You, you don't have any preference. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it yeah, uh, it is capital intense up front. I think that's a, a big. Th this is a very uh, feast or famine, you know, kind of model, because I'm guessing, you know, you, you know, maybe you get a good investment deal and a company goes, you know, huge. And that's awesome for you. Um, but, but then it also means that, you know, sometimes you're, you know, in, in the desert and there's no money coming in and that's okay. Well, that, that's what makes or breaks this model. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think this is similar to another solution we have, which is a nonprofit incubator. And I mean, those could almost be the same. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. yeah. You, you need to be very a very altruistic person you know to to attempt a, a pay it forward model you know regardless if it's nonprofit or or you know not yeah. um yeah but i guess nonprofit would just make sure that you're you know reinvesting any any surplus yeah yeah so those are those are all physical solutions. We have a, an online solution, which uh, I I haven't seen these be super successful. I'm part of a lot of online communities that are very loosely organized. I know there's communities that do this really well. Um, I have not found one like incubator esque that I really like. Yeah. yeah. So you know, half of the selling point of incubators is the connections and the the info sessions and seminars you know that they that they offer so that that's really what this one is doing it saying okay you can work at in your own place um and, and we will try to provide the community um yeah but i yeah i i believe that there is just something that is um yeah lost when when we give up the in person um yeah in person nature of of networking well i think as it is set up right now right i mean we're talking about zoom zoom is horrific for networking right it's it's yep. like meeting people i'm trying to remember what our problem is um it's hard to connect with people on large video calls. Yep. Like yep. it just is. And, and I, I think to, tools like TeamFlow are starting to, to push the yeah. envelope here a little bit. Yeah. Very intriguing. I've never been on a, a TeamFlow with more than a, you know, just, just, just you. Yeah. Um, but, you know, with their spatial audio. Yeah. You could, you can virtually wander around and, and you know, connect with people and have you know a, a private conversation or, or a semi-private conversation like it is in a, a in-person networking event um, i think the challenge the beauty of an in-person event is you have spontaneity and i think when you can add a spatial element you start to start mm -hmm. to get that back a little bit yeah well and, and you know with in-person events uh you know in the startup community it's it's very common to have a you know some some daddy's al apple juice um oh yeah some, some alcoholic beverages to uh uh you know loosen everyone up a little yeah it's a little bit true. weird to uh you know just be sitting in your basement drinking a beer while on a zoom call yeah i think we did that at my last company though we had a happy hour and it, people actually well, attended yeah i think those were common like right at the beginning of the pandemic that's true. That's true. Um, I know. Yeah. People tried a lot at the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah. And then, and then... We're, we're proud of people. We are. And then I think just people got tired, which is totally fair. But yeah. 
I think, I think that level of effort is needed online if you're going to be mm -hmm. all remote. Yeah. Um, okay, the, the last solution that we want to talk about is just changing what an incubator is. Yeah. And then the last solution set, because there's yeah, a couple the of different set. you know permutations of what this would look like. Yeah. Um, so oh, I'm interested in have the incubator choose the people. What do you could you unpack that a little bit? Yeah. So um basically be you know operate like an accelerator, but earlier stage. Um and, and okay, you know being just very selective in who you let in your incubator and, and the hopes there is that you know because you as the incubator runner or operator um you know you're choosing the companies that you think will be successful um and 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 then there's hopefully less less chance that you know you the the management and the founders are think that it's going to be, you know, lead to different paths of success. You know, will it be successful or not? This doesn't solve the problem. It just band-aids it, right? It, it just, the, the root problem yeah. is still there. Yeah. Like but the root problem it, is choosing. I mean, really it's predicting the future. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But it, it, it is allowing you to have, sort of a first vetting process. That's true. Yeah. Um so that that one in my opinion is a pretty weak one. And I think I want to make a connection real quick. I think this is connected to like humans are terrible predictors. Yeah. Which actually I don't think I we have in this one. I'll have to add that at some yeah. point. Um yeah, so humans are terrible predictors and having the incubator choose people just means you're trying to predict the future. But, yeah, and then it, it leads to a lot of bias, right? Yeah, Where, yeah. You know, whether that is, you know, bias that you're only cert selecting certain types of companies or if you're, you know, uh, you know, intentionally or unintentionally, you know, you know, choosing saying oh i think this type of people you know are, are more successful you know that is something we we don't want right yeah um and, and this well, does nothing this this makes it easier for for that to happen i mean there's things you can do control for that but yeah in general yeah, yeah. it's gonna make it harder um you're mm -hmm. gonna have to put a lot of effort into that um which might you know might be good because honestly this whole like anyone can come that's really easy to say oh see we're not biased anyone can come it's like well mm -hmm. no you have to do a little bit more thinking than that folks yeah. Hate yeah. to say it um i think an interesting approach and we've seen this uh in boulder another solution no, is have those two are separate there's have the incubator choose oh you're right this is actually yeah. the inverse yeah so, so so this next one is to have you know, instead of incubators trying to find founders, you know, who are already are, you know, sold on on their idea that they're going to change their the world with, um, you know, replacement snow shovel blades. Um, you say, no, that's not the people we want. We want the people who are before that, who who want to think systematically about choosing a startup. A yeah. And those are the people we can actually teach to, you know follow essentially the process we advocate for like a noise reduction startup process um and, and choose those and then you can you know do this you know are, are they getting a, a stipend or are they is it just free to work or you know how it how that all happens you know is a little bit in the background um yep. and, but yeah you choose the people who want to be founders but don't have an idea teach them a process that leads to higher chances of success and and that's you know you change what an incubator is but i think will lead to more sex more successful startups and then also with that one because you people who have that mentality where it's you know not the first idea they come to or it, it's i you know ideas are cheap 
I can come up with a thousand ideas, you know, it's just choosing the right one. If it's like, you know, no, that that's a garbage idea. You know, yep. even though you've spent, you know, a month or a year, you, if you have that mentality, you want to get out as soon as you see where it's going, if it's not yeah. going in a good direction. Um, so that's how that one aligns it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then I think that's, and then kind of Boulder Bits, which was a company in Boulder, they would come up with startup ideas and match them to people. So they yeah. kind of did the inverse of that where mm -hmm. they said, let's come up with and trash a bunch of ideas. Let's pick one we like. Let's pick some founders that could be successful in this field and then let them run. Yeah. No, and, and I think that one, I'm very glad that this happened to be at the bottom of this list because that's my favorite idea, honestly. Yeah, um, I know. Is you have... And then especially where this gets paired with a normal free to work incubator. So your profit generating arm is this, you know, matching startups with people where, mm. you know, because the company came up with the ideas, they rightfully get equity in that company. So if it's successful, um, you know, you get the, the company, that's where they're raising their money. Um, but then you know, a big question is where are you getting these people? And if you've got a, a free to use incubator space, that's a great place to network. And, you know, either as, as these successful companies are scaling, you know, yep. that's, that's a talent pool. Or if you've got a new venture and you need a, a founding team, you know, you, you're networked, you've created your community. Yep. Um, and, and I just love that. Um, Exactly. I will say that yeah. I think the real promise of this is not where it's to bring entrepreneurship to non-entrepreneurial areas. Um, yeah. You know, Boulder yeah. Bits, unfortunately, they, they had, you know, some health problems with the founder, so they're not operating anymore. Um, I don't, you know, we, we ran into them, what, like five years ago, um, yep. and that's where we learned about them. I, I personally haven't kept in contact with them at all. Um, so I don't yeah. know, you know, what, what that whole surrounding is situation is, but they're, they're no longer operating, but I feel like Boulder is the wrong place to do that. Um, because in a, in a place like Boulder, where everyone is working on their own thing, you don't, you never want to take a, a leap on an, an idea that's not your own. Um, uh, yeah, because yeah, the, the there the problem is not like being dynamic and being interested in startups. Yeah, like yeah, people are gonna start companies no matter yeah, what yeah. in Boulder, whether but you're there or not. I think yeah. you know somewhere like West Michigan, you know, which is you know there there are you know good hardworking people all around, but they're mm -hmm. they're very conservative in their their choices. And their risk tolerance. Yeah, yeah and, their, and their risk tolerance. And that that's, you know, okay. Um, and, and, you know, we've been running, you know, pretty well with, you know, manu uh, manufacturing in this area um, and, and, you know, furniture and automotive. But eventually yeah. that's going to end and we need another wave of entrepreneurship. Um, and, and I think this would be a way to do that. Um, yeah, just, you know, because you could even you know, sweeten the pot. It's like, okay, here's a good idea. Here is, you know, we'll even provide you, you know, a small salary as you're starting it up. So it's not like you're going from, you know, yep. your, en your engineering job where you're making good money to, to nothing. It's, you know, yeah, we're going to scale it back, but you know, you'll, you'll be able to put food on your table. Um, and, and I, I just love this idea of, you know, being able to, to bring entrepreneurship to places where it's not and without creative. just like, oh, we need to do, we need to copy Silicon Valley. It's like, no, the seeds of Silicon Valley, you know, that ship has sailed. You can't really keep doing them. And, and it's not like we can, you know, replicate Shenzhen, you know, cause there it's just all the, all the manufacturing that's happening there. And you know, companies want to be close to their manufacturing. 
you know we, no. we need the next model and i think that could be the next model for, for like yeah. yeah an organic like local community model that mm -hmm. can can grow and scale as needed you know um yeah and has kind of a flywheel effect because as there's success it breeds more success in this model yep. Yep. Um, and you can actually start to transition between these, you know, you could go from the incubator that you fund um, and then you take some money. And then if people start donating back and giving back or mm -hmm. sponsoring it, then you can offer it for free. You know, like there's yeah. transitions you can make between these different models. Yeah. 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 But um, one note about public libraries, that's one yeah. of our bright, bright spots here is that I, one of our good friends, Kylan tried this, tried to start up kind of like not an incubator in the Holland public library, but tried to start like an entrepreneurial hub and, and had significant <laughs> challenges there just because of the culture of the library. It, it didn't match super well with well, the entrepreneurial move fast and break things type of huh. setup. So I think libraries are a great, bright spot. I think, yes, you know, if, if you are looking for a place to work, it's easy to overlook the library, but yep they are awesome places to go and get work done and, and have that physical space. Yes. There yes. is also a decent chance that there will be offerings for, you know, some entrepreneurial things. You know, I think of the Boulder library and they had a lot around. They were good. Yeah. Around they entrepreneurship. Had... But then, you know, even, even little places like, you know, Holland, Michigan with, you know, 30,000 residents, they, they tried it. They did, you know, which yeah. I think is, is fantastic. Um, so I guess my, my, my advice would be become part of the solution there, you know, go to your library and, you know, start advocating for, for entrepreneurial sessions or, or attending um, because yeah. our libraries are the culture that is there. Right. And that's changed by your presence. Um, so yep. yeah, be part of the solution. That's true. Yeah. Um, so we've got a bunch of connections. One uh, I really want to call is called Cenus. This is from Patrick, I think it's McCormick. He's an excellent writer. I follow his blog called Not Boring. It's very worth reading. It talks about what an entrepreneurial community looks like, ideally, or what it really a creative community. He talks about Florence with Leonardo da Vinci. He talks about Silicon Valley and all kinds of other examples and it just really teases these out and then connects it to crypto and starts to poke at what it's going to look like in the future. So I think, you know, something there, um, you know, we, we trash talked West Michigan a little bit as not being an entrepreneurial center. Um, yeah. But we aren't now, but we used to be i mean back right? yeah you talk about herman you, miller's you talk steel about case. furniture and office furniture that was west michigan was the seniors yeah right and Where, same with automotive but you yeah. talk about detroit yeah. And, yeah and you know we we have these yeah i guess that's my 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 one call that so my apology to west michigan is you know we we've got some of that in in our roots here yeah and then we we have some just a, a range of other connections. We have Noise by Kahneman, which we highly recommend. You know, mm -hmm. how do you pick startups? That's basically the question. Is there's a lot of noise in predicting the future, so Noise talks about how to cut down on that and and mm -hmm. really figure out where things yeah. are going, what are real yeah. trends, what are not. Yeah. Yep. Getting um, getting um, error out of our decision making and and Noise is part of that. That's a great way of putting that. Uh, I think one of the most interesting connections is we do things for success and not for information. And so I think when you're working on a startup, you're focused on, on just success when, and I think a lot of times that's tied to this idea that you have one idea and really mm -hmm. what you should be doing is trying to get information about a lot of ideas to see if they're going to work or not. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, and then I want to really quick check and see if there's any other um, connections that we can make here that really start to make sense. Um, yeah, there, so just kind of for those listening, we have this thing called Obsidian. It has some really smart 
tools that allow you to connect different ideas together using natural language processing, which is fun. Which I want to start to do a little bit of our own stuff, but mm. yeah. This is, I think actually well, this is pretty wanna, well connected. Um, but. You want to connect that to the, um, the article I started writing? Yes, yeah. So just as kind of a heads up, this is an experiment in that we're already writing an article about this. And so you should be on the lookout for that probably in the next couple of weeks about what, you know, good co-working spaces, or I guess I should say incubators look like. I need to remove that from the title. And so it'll, it'll kind of dive into that. And I think hopefully go into more depth and give a really clear yep. outline of what we mean by this. All right. I think that's, that's all we've got. Do you have yep. anything else to add? Nope. All right. Thank you folks for hanging out with us and listening to our problems. We really appreciate it. Have a good one.